Thank you. Good morning. Uh, indeed, we are facing a shock without precedent uh, since the Great Depression. Its economic and social consequences pose policy challenges unlike any we have seen in our lifetimes. Also, inflation rate is a further evidence. Data just released this morning shows inflation rate at 0.3%. This year, April last year, it was 1.7%. This is the first time that I present our country-specific recommendation, but in fact, it is the 10th time that the Commission is presenting, and Valdis has made maybe a few of these 10, this uh, recommendation. The first time was in 2011, when Europe was in the depths of a very different crisis, in the aftermath of the Great Recession to the one we face today. And because, as they say, this time it's different, so are the recommendations we present today. They are different. And they are just one week before the recovery plan. And these are two strictly linked steps. Our recommendations address first and foremost the immediate challenges we are confronted with as a direct result of the pandemic. So strengthening our healthcare system, supporting our workers, and saving our companies. At the same time, the sustainability and competitiveness challenges we faced before the crisis have not gone away. Our climate is still suffering, our environment is still hurting. People in cities around the world have experienced clear skies and clean air, in many cases for the first time in their lives. But we know that this is just a pleasant side effect of a dreadful, terrible situation. If millions of people have been able to carry on working while lockdown, included many of the staff of the Commission, this is also a reminder of the huge task Europe faces to be competitive in the digital age. So as we look to the future, our investment and reform objective must remain focused on making a success of the green and digital transitions, as well as on social sustainability. And I think it's very important that we are speaking today, having yesterday adopted the SURE instrument. The sustainable and development goals of the United Nations are and must remain our compass. Uh, let me add three specific remark. First, in terms of fiscal policy, our message is crystal clear. There needs to be a supportive fiscal stance in all member states and, recommend, and we recommend that all member states take all necessary measures to effectively address the pandemic, sustain the economy, and support the ensuing recovery. When it comes to the question of excessive deficit procedures, our conclusion which is that at this juncture, a decision on whether to place member states under EDP should not be taken, is fully coherent with the decision taken two months ago to activate the general escape plan. <coughs> Finally, we underline that public expenditure and investment are important to support the green and digital transition. Once fiscal policy normalizes, it will be vital to avoid making the mistakes of the past in the fiscal consolidations of 10 years ago, investment was the first victim. To repeal this approach would be to sacrifice, to repeat this approach would be means to sacrifice our long-term priorities. Second remark, the fight against aggressive tax planning again features in our recommendations. And I must say that this is an even clearer priority than in the past. All member states, especially in the recovery situation, must be able to rely on their fair share of tax revenues to implement the fiscal support needed to get through this crisis. Third remark, our European Union is also a union in which the rule of law is of paramount importance and also on economic grounds. 
when the rule of law is questioned, it impacts on the business environment and investment climate. Our recommendation this year also clearly highlight, as in previous cases, this issue. We have also adopted today the latest enhanced surveillance report for Greece. The report concludes that considering the extraordinary circumstances posed by the pandemic, the country has taken the necessary actions to deliver on its specific reform commitments. And I expect this report to pave the way for a positive decision by the Eurogroup on the next tranche of debt relief measures worth 748 million euros. We adopted also streamlined post-program surveillance reports for Spain and Cyprus. In conclusion, before passing the floor to Nicolas, I have mentioned the Great Depression and the Great Recession. We must ensure that this crisis will not be remembered as the Great Fragmentation. Great fragmentation in which a symmetric shock leads to asymmetric outcomes for countries, sectors, regions, individuals, and generations. This is why we need to help individuals and companies absorb the shock. We need to repair the shortfall in investment and equity, and we need to transform our economies with a new growth model embracing the green and digital transition. In a nutshell, we need a well-funded recovery plan and we will present it next week. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Schmidt, the floor is yours.